All right. Um, so my dope product is a podcast. Some of you may have heard of it. It's called uh, the Joe Rogan Experience. And uh-huh. it's an episode where Terrence Howard went on to talk about some of his um, discoveries, his scientific discoveries. And some of you might not know that Terrence Howard is a somewhat of a genius when it comes to physics science um he has he's he's kind of examining science when it in 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 conjunction with metaphysics so and then he's actually able to explain it in a way that we can all kind of understand in pieces like it's very complex but it's it's still you know what i mean it's still based in ways that most of us can understand if you do any kind of sort of research about science you know what i mean yeah and and anything that you don't know or don't understand you can really do your own research and kind of come to your own conclusions about it a, a lot of what he talks about as well so it's kind of <clears throat> I, I i really appreciated the fact that he went on there and the fact that joe rogan had him on and that he got yeah. so much exposure for some of his um thoughts and ideas because a lot of the things that he talks about is things that people that I I've always thought I've always thought about myself, and he he was able to come with some different ideas that I never even thought of either. So um, I would like to share with you guys a few little clips from that uh, that um, appearance that he made on the Joe Rogan show. Yeah, because it was very refreshing, and he had the right audience, not like with the view. It was just like, what? What is he talking about? Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. And like yeah, that's people. the thing. He, he's starting to present himself as a physicist now. That's the thing. You, it depends on how, in what capacity that you're compare, you're um, appearing. Because people right. want to see you in whatever capacity they're used to seeing you. That's the problem. Okay, I'm going to share a little clip here of some of the main thing all motion is expressed in waves all waves are expects expressed in curves it always makes spiral so because of the concept of gravity and because of the concept of this event horizon this super point of gravity this infinite point that light can't even escape that this exists because of the of their theory math of gravity and their math remember yeah they have a thing called zero they they, they go from one to zero to right. negative one there is no zero to even think zero so do you think that zero is a concept that came along with currency it should be attached to currency in that regard because in physics there is it's either nothing remains still there's nothing still in the universe there's nothing that doesn't have motion because everything is connected so if one thing is still right. everything that's than, connected to it yeah. has to be still it can never be one thing still. electricity tries to get to its its balanced state right when it gets there magnetism takes over and it pushes over so there's this pendulum and as soon as it gets to this state it bounces off that other noble gas and it makes its way all the way back over here and it's about to have equanimity and then it gets pulled back into the other direction and that's the breathing in and breathing out and the pendulum effect that we've all observed in natural phenomena in the universe and that's a part of everything everything behaves that way every one of our cells every comes down to our cells are made up of water mostly water 80 percent 90 percent water somewhere water is hydrogen hydrogen has 12 vortices that's behaving with it 12 opposing vortices so what in your model what happens to these suns when they supernova everything gets old and die everything gets old and die and does everything recompress has to and you breathe out what happens to that air another plant breathes that air in so would this be the universe itself would it be galaxies would it be everything everything the same way so as the sun expands and projects and ejects particles they expand they go further and further from the sun and at a certain point they come back well at a certain point what do they hit there's other expanding stars and 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 um so like waves colliding yes from the other from the other from the other star systems they have an expanding what is the the 
think of the solar wind. They have expanding solar winds. Mm -hmm. So when they meet our our planet, our star meets a, the solar wind from another star at that end of that spot. Now there's two pressure conditions. So you have another Lagrange spot that's happening there. That's when those waves start coming back, but they get hit and they, mm. And if they hit at 120 degrees, because that's how the universe is arranged, now these things become electric. So they, instead of coming from the planar side and expanding out at the equator, they now come back up from the northern and southern parts. So does this account for stellar nurseries? Yes. All of these things are just pressure conditions hitting each other. And they're causing that. That's where the Birkeland currents are running through, those higher electrical fields. But everything in the universe is just electricity. You know what I like about this the most is that he's always he's always mentioning these scientific phenomena that you can go and research and know what the hell he's talking about. He's actually saying right. these, he's not like leaving it all. You know what I mean? If you know it, you know it. If you don't, you don't. He's like actually educating yeah. in that way. That's amazing. And he's wearing all white while doing it. Go ahead, Terry. <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a good yeah. possibility he's like part of the masons and that's why he knows everything he knows and that's that simple you it's know, just a question time I think that's yeah that's what it is yeah. Yeah. and we call it magnetism when it's devitalized but it's still electricity we call the, the uh -huh. radiative side, it's the feminine side. Uh -huh. And the, the contractive uh -huh. side is the positive, masculine side. There, it's a balance and it's never been, it's never been anything but that balance and we've complicated it with a lie. If you're right, so many people are wrong. Everyone's wrong. Oh, well, the universe, <laughs> the universe backs me up. And, and I have the proof of it. You, you have all these physicists that saying something different, but none of them have 97 patents. None of them have introduced a new form of flight with unlimited mid-air bonding. None of them have discovered four super symmetrical systems. This is what we've done. This is what the collective is able to do when you put yourself into the divine space. Because that spirit is waiting. It's just like, okay, are you going to make yourself available for it? So let me ask you this. If, you, if I had a magic wand and uh, I allowed you to uh, not just show this, but uh, allowed all of these people that have these opposing ideas, you, you debate them, you duke it out, you emerge victorious, okay? With this magic wand and now people go, just listen to Terrence. What do we do? Well, then once we, now we write new, new, ask, new axioms and new postulates based off the real wave conjugations. Now we adjust our understanding of our physics to fit natural phenomena. And then we are in balance with it and we have to let go of the idea of this currency. We're the only creatures in the known universe that uses currency, that uses an indirect form of payment instead of a direct exchange. We have to get past that point and that's the hard thing because this entire world is run on that and that's where the one times one equaling two came into it. Into its All right, so what I'm starting to think <clears throat> is that, first of all, they, you know there's a lot of people that know all of this stuff that he's talking about. Uh, there's a lot of people yes. know all the stuff that he's talking about. It's like I, it, maybe he was chosen to reveal all of the all of this stuff to everybody or something like that. And um, because what he's talking about right now is so is getting rid of uh currency, which is already something that people have on the agenda. It's called Nisara and Jasara. Nisara Jasara. It's a whole philosophy or something like that where um everything is going to be like or like a meritocracy where it's like mm -hmm. you, you it's like like credit so everything is just like reputation based i think I'm uh -huh. sure that's it it's like, yes. there's, it's like, like yeah, there's no actual money like money money becomes outmoded social credits yeah. and the better you behave the more access you have right. um yeah yeah they have it in china it's very scary 
he couldn't buy a train ticket become a court case. You know what I'm saying? I saw like one where you have to basically you. scan your face. You have to scan your face, and if your face ain't scanning, you ain't doing nothing. Yeah, so okay. the, this is a very complicated thing. I don't know. I don't know if that's what he's trying to do, what he's trying to usher in, or if he's a part of something, you know, that, you know, we don't know about or what. But I do, I, I, I think it's really great that he's opening people's minds up to that. My, my, what I, the main thing that I think is amazing about what he's doing is that he's opening up his, open up people's minds that a lot of the information that we're being told is not actually accurate. Like a lot of the things that are like, right supposed to be facts are not actually facts they're all um theories like majority of the things that we're talking about are theories especially space and a lot of historical stuff is all kind of the theoretical because that nobody and not a lot of people i mean we don't really have facts we don't really know we we have to yeah. make make educated guesses based on evidence and what he's saying is that a lot of right. the evidence that we're going by is just like estimations and we need to be more accurate with um how we're measuring yeah, things. No one's seen anything. No one's yeah. seen anything. Because yeah. I say that when I was small, I'm like everything I learned is through a book. I'm like, I I've, I've never seen space. All right. All we know that's a big ocean up there and you have to go two thousand feet until you actually get to another planet. We don't know nothing. But um, one thing he's also including in what he's talking about is manifestation because I tell people there's a grid around you. Yeah. Now, one thing I, that you can do to change your life is remember that grid is always around you, but you have to train yourself into remembering whatever emotions or thoughts you put out. Imagine the color of the grid changing and your emotions attaching to it and sending yeah. messages out. Yeah. So that when you're attached to the grid, it gives you the ugly or whatever. You remember how you would say, be careful what you say because, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's what it becomes, and you were always right. I knew that when I was small, but, you know, adulthood kind of messes that up for you, especially if you've gone yeah. through stuff. Yeah, it's, it's logic, connected. logic that fucks everything up, because it's basically like, oh, you have to be realistic. Like, all this realistic crap is all about yeah. staying, in the, staying exactly as you are and not changing at all, you know? Yeah. Because nobody would hear me. Grown-ups would just shut me down, and I knew what I was talking about because everything I manifested as a child I got for myself as a teenager. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then I was like, maybe I am thinking too much, and then I shut the program down. But bitch, I'm back. Bitch, I'm back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I got to do Wow. So yeah, a couple of different things that I remember from the from the uh, episode was um that he also he he actually mentioned it a moment ago and when he picked up that little device, remember when he picked it up, that was like a model of his yeah. um of his of his propulsion system that he's uh proposed um and that basically is like several of the drone fans those things that help the fat help help the drone to lift into the air those fans so basically he has them on different on different um angles he has like eight different right propellers right and they yes. can pivot in the control to allow you to pivot it, it. it. yeah you know, different things and because of like the forces that are at play when they're actually spinning and they're all spinning at the same time mm -hmm. depending on like what one is on and what's off like a binary almost you know what I mean and maybe even the speed I feel like there's a lot of different ways that you can actually use that thing if depending on the speed of each one of them so you have different velocities depending on which one and what kind of maneuver you want it to do you know the, the yeah. possibilities are kind of endless possibly I don't know it's so easy. It's just like because you know how they have the fan boat down south so it's basically the same thing you have four Four my propellers just pushing from the ground and you yeah. can move them any which way. I think it's so awesome. I would it's like to see to how it operates. We we watch it. We watch it another time. How it operates and like what kind of things it can do. Let's just okay. watch a bit more of this because I Real bird. what happens is is that 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 interview that he did with Joe Rogan is three and a half hours long. So I didn't actually see the whole thing, and so this is like a fifteen minute. Um, mashup of some of the ideas that he talked about. So I'm just going to skip through real quick. Well, the thing about currency is it's connected um, to technological innovation because of this uh, 
unlimited potential for growth. And when you have an unlimited potential for growth, you have people that are extremely motivated to make massive amounts of money and they innovate in a very high way. And then they also implement that innovation in the form of technology. But their technology is, is antiquated con to, compared to mine. There's no government on this planet that has the technology that I have or can outdo what I have because you can't outdo the fractal. How many people have you, I know you spoke at Oxford about this, but you didn't speak. Yeah, they, no, about, they didn't. Oxford did something that, I, that broke my heart. Five minutes before the presentation, they wouldn't allow me to have a screen and show and show. Yeah, because they don't want you to reveal this information that you're talking about. They they wanted to sabotage you, but it's all right. They are yeah, yeah. coming out anyway. Sure. Why? Oh, their computer was down. And I was like, well, you can use my computer. No, we have sensitive things attached to it. You know, I just need the projector. I don't need anything else because they just, they didn't want me to go and talk about this. And that's why I went out there and said, hey, put those students would have had too many questions if you would have like had some damning proof. They would have had too many fucking questions for them professors and they couldn't, have, they couldn't allow that shit. They needed yeah, to be they needed to to be able to do they they needed to possibly be able to explain away a lot of what he was talking about. Yeah. Pull out well, your calculator. We talked about acting for mm -hmm. a couple of minutes, for 20 minutes. And then I was like, pull out your calculator. And I want you to enter the square root of two in there. And I let's walk through this <laughs> loop that is the square root of two. I was like, let's walk through this where the square root of two cubed is the same value as the square root of two times two. And then when you divide it by two and cube it again, you get back to the, you take the square root of two, 1.414213562373095. You cube it, it's 2.828427121746190. Divide it by two, it get back to 1.414. Cube it again, it's back to 2.828. Divide it by two, back to 1.414. Here we're making, here we're taking one, two, three big steps quantum physics equation has that square root of two in there things could you explain that though to the to the lay person how does the universe multiply volumetrically as opposed to the way it does not move does it linearly it does not walk on all of our math is based upon a two-dimensional projection what they do in calculus they will reduce one act if the action of all things they'll keep trying to reduce it down to one moment because they believe Newton's first law that everything is moves in a straight line or everything is still until acted upon. They forget that everything is in motion and that concert of motion is a necessity. They have to include all the other forces. They have to simplify this shit. These niggas cannot think this complex. Uh -huh. They can't think in a concert. You're talking about a concert. They can't think it that way. It's like, it's like, is like when you you know when you're talking to a man and a woman yeah. has like these these complex thoughts that are like all connected with all these different things and when you're talking to them you can't go off of topic otherwise they start devaluing your argument because they say oh you're you're talking about to all these different things but they're connected and they they there there's a reason why you know what I mean it happens all the time. I know exactly what you're talking about. You go on topic for two seconds, you're dismantled. Yeah, because then they say, then they say it has no logic. Right. They have to be very careful with presentation. In order to have equanimity in their equations. And so how, in a practical sense, does this affect mathematics? Well, once we let go of Cartesian space in the 90 degree angles, well, picture this. Let, let's take another practical place. Look at a computer chip. It has all of these 90 degree turns on it, typically, where they run the electricity. Can you imagine running at 186,624 miles a second in one direction and you hit a 90, you hit a wall and you've got to stop, bounce off of that wall, and then you pick up your speed and you bounce off the next wall and you bounce off the next and the next and the next and the next. How much heat are you building up? How much friction is being, being built up from the interference in comparison to if it was just spherical? Mm. Just going around. It would build up no heat. 
And if you allow it to be spiral, which my patent was talking about, that first patent was talking about, you're able to- It talks a lot about um, the fact that we use a lot of straight lines and everything, and it's impractical and, it's, and it goes against nature. So he's saying basically on a on a computer trip we should be using um curves and and and, and circles to for the for the for the circuits instead of well, right shaping yeah because it's creating cre yeah. too much friction uh huh yeah, exactly very interesting. All right, I'm going to cut it there because, you know, we get the gist of it. And if you want to see more about what he was talking about, you can go ahead and check it out on YouTube. Just put in Joe Rogan, Terrence Howard, and it will come up. It's a three-hour uh, three hour interview, but you can find clips on the internet, which is which will make it easier to consume, you know. But, yeah, it's really... They're everywhere, yeah. Really good, really Definitely good. On the and I'm glad to, I'm glad that, you know, some of this information coming out and some of these people, some people that we never even heard of could come forward with even more, you know, information now that he's broken the, the seal on this information that is like not, um, is not conventional, which that's exciting. Right. Yeah. So, so to do it. that's right.